happy Mother's Day to all of you here in this video call. Thank it's exciting. You. It's a great day, kind of weird this year, being in our houses in, uh, in the stay-at-home orders, but I just want to say happy Mother's Day. I'm probably not the first one to say happy Mother's Day today. Hopefully not, right? <laughs> Hopefully some other ones who are saying uh, happy Mother's Day to you. So let's, let's introduce you who's on our call today. Let's start with it from the top down here. So next, next to me is actually my mom, my mom here. So mom, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Share, you. share who you are and then your context of this call for you. Uh, well, I'm a mom of three children and a grandmom of seven children. Yeah, seven grandchildren. Yeah. yeah. What else do you want to know? <laughs> That's a good start. That's all we need. Any, anything else? Or, I mean, uh, going down to Carolyn. Um, I, my name is Carolyn. <laughs> I'm 20 and I'm expecting my first baby girl in September. Yeah. Okay. Sure, Chanel, you can go ahead. Hi, my name is Chanel. I have two young boys, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Maureen. Hi, uh, my name is Maureen. Everyone calls me Mo. I am a mother of three. Um, my first one is um, in Oregon, and I have the two younger girls here with me. Yeah. And my name is Angela, and I'm the mother of three. I have a 17-year-old um, uh, boy, a 14-year-old girl, and a 8-year-old boy. And your unique setting for you is your mom is actually living with you, too. Yes, and also I'm a full-time caregiver for my 83-year-old mother who has Alzheimer's. So, yes. So, sometimes yeah. I'm a mother to her as well. <laughs> <laughs> We have, um, we have a, a cool mix in, in context here because we have a pregnant mom, young pregnant mom, first child on the way with Carolyn. We have Chanel who is married with two kids doing schoolwork at home as well. And you're a teacher, you're a teacher's aide, right? So, and then Mo, if it's okay to mention your situation. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So Mo is, a, Mo is a single mom with children going through this, this time right now. And then you have Angela, who has her mom at home. She's turned into a teacher at home as well. And she has teenagers and young kids. So, um, and then of course, my mom being a grandmother here and uh, just, she's mom, so she's in here as well for that. So to speak into mom. And uh, so thank you for, for joining our, our call today. And um, tell me real quick, what are some traditional Mother's Day celebrations in your home? And what will you guys do this year with this whole stay at home order? Anyone can go. Oh. Um, well, traditionally for me at this time, my sister um, would have been here actually. She lives in Oklahoma City. So each year, um, up to a point, she would bring my sister, my mom down to visit her around my mom's birthday. And then they would come back around Mother's Day. Um, and her oldest at times would come join us here. And my brother and his family would come from Maryland. And we'd go to church together and have Mother's Day dinner together here at my house. Um, so this year will be quite different. Um, I anticipate there'll be a lot of Zoom, probably a, a dinner over Zoom together with all the families or something like that. Um, and uh, we'll probably still have a, you know, I'm sure somebody will ask me what I want to eat that day and, and we'll just probably relax and have fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, mine is um, pretty different. Usually we just kind of go out to eat that day, go to a restaurant or something. You know, my mom lives in a different state so she's not always able to come and be with us but when she is we all go out to eat together but this year we'll probably eat at home <laughs> and just spend some some more quality time i it's gonna be really different it's gonna be a lot of facetiming for the grandmas that want to see their grandchildren that day and just yeah spending that time together yeah yeah, so it's the same way with here at, um, with Chanel's. Um, usually it's about going out and just, you know, really calling all the women in my life. So, but same here is going to be different. I think I'm going to go ahead and try and be spontaneous and try to make something that I've never made before. Hopefully 
nice. hopefully it'll pass with the girls and um but it's the same way it's going to be a lot of facetimes with ladies um a lot of grandmothers a lot of um moms like spiritual moms and everything so i'm really excited to see how this turns out and i'm i'm sure and i'm i'm 100 percent sure that it's going to be awesome because you know we have we have the technology and capability to do that yeah how about you, Caroline? What what would be your day like? Gosh. Um, well, with my mom, we usually my dad barbecues and just everyone goes over. And usually it's just my sister who has the grandchildren. But now that I'm pregnant, they are treating me already like the baby's here kind of type of thing. So I don't know anything about me. Maybe my husband will surprise me, but I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, usually we just barbecue at my parents' house and just spoil my mom. They don't like gifts, but we try to spoil them. So. Yeah. That's cool. And mom, I guess, you know, what are we going to do? That's a good question, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's on me, isn't it? <laughs> we all get together at my house or at Jen's house or yours, and the guys cook out. Yeah. And each one of us brings a dish to share. I make coleslaw and whatever else that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. And we just have a good time hugging on each other and laughing and talking and eating and visiting for a few hours. Of course, we can't do that this, this year. Uh, usually, also, we face chat with Renee and pass the phone around to everyone so that they get to see her because she's in Colorado Springs and so is Sean and the two kids. So this year, I'm hoping... This is what I'd like, so you know. I'm hoping we can all Zoom at the same time. Even the, the, like the boys, Taylor and Tyler, who have their own computers, get on there. I want to see your faces. I want to talk to you. I want to visit with my grandkids. So I'm hoping we can all Zoom and just really have a chance to visit. We don't have to do it over the mill, because I know with Renee being in Colorado Springs, it's hard to time that. But uh, that's why I think being with, even though we can't be with our family, being able to see them, communicate, mm -hmm. that's the next best thing. So yeah. for me, for Mother's Day, the only gift I want is to be able to see and talk with everyone. We will make that happen. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Anyone can jump in anytime. Like, does this bother you? as a mother to not be able to go see your mom or to not be able to <clears throat> kind of not i'm not saying you're you're being vain by saying this but does it kind of hurt you know to not have to not have that celebration like we usually do um i'll, I'll jump in first if that's okay yeah. um so being military as well i can't remember to be honest i can't remember when was the last time i actually saw my mom from mother's day um, and it does hurt because I really wish I was able to do that. And I took advantage or I was, if you want to use the word ungrateful, those previous years where I never um, flew out to go see her. I made a lot of excuses and, you know, said, oh, it's school days or it's too close. And now that we are in the, during this pandemic, we're confined to our homes. Um, it's making me realize how, how, I took for granted the time that all those years that I wish I was able to and it's not that I don't see her but I mean it's the fact that um she lives all the way on the west coast and I'm all the way on the east coast and my sisters live in the west coast and they get to see they get to see her as much as they want even though you know even though they have this pandemic but they can see her a lot more often or quite more than I can so it does hurt a little bit um Maybe yeah. throughout the years, I've kind of grown a little callous, if that's proper, to not see my mom during this day. Yeah. I think what hurts um, for me is, because my, obviously my mom is here, so I get to celebrate with her. Um, but what hurts is, uh, I actually hurt more for my brother and my sister because they can't be here to yeah. celebrate with her. So, you know, I know my sister will be celebrated. I know my brother's partner will be celebrated as a mother. Um, but I just feel for them because they can't be here to celebrate um, with her. And, and, you know, everyone has their situations, but particularly with her having Alzheimer's and, and that memory fading, you know, each year is, is a different and harder to do. So that's probably the biggest pain point for us. Yeah. yeah. To piggyback on that a little bit, um, we, like she said, we all have our situations. Um, I know my mom is 
she loves her grandkids, so it's going to be uh, difficult for her not to be able to come and be with us during this day. You know, I have my kids here, which is awesome, and it's a blessing. I'm able to be with them that day. Um, so it's a little, you know, it, it's nice to be able to be with my kids, but I also feel for my own mom, who's not able to be with her grandkids that day, you know, and enjoy them like she usually so easily can and stuff like that. So it's a bittersweet thing, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Yep. yeah, it's kind of funny as you said that, because I'm thinking there's no excuse for not celebrating now. We're all in the house. <laughs> so. Well, I, I don't get to see my mom, but maybe every three years on Mother's Day because um, she uh, is 92. And so uh, I have a brother and a sister. And so she goes to their places too. And right now, I mean, she can't do that anyway. So I don't expect it. I'm just grateful for any time when I do get to see her. Um, I think it's just really hard not, not getting the hugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, even just from me as a perspective, it's kind of weird, you know, to not be able to go and lavish on mom, you know, this year. I mean, we try to do that all the time, right? So, but it's like, it's kind of weird that we're not going to be celebrating like we usually do at church and getting pictures and going out to lunch or, or cooking out, you know, like we usually do grilling. So it's, it is, it's odd. It's odd. And even, you know, treating um, treating my wife this year is going to be different, you know? Um, so it's, yeah, it's interesting. Carolyn, would you like to speak into that too? or? You can... Yeah. Um, I think honestly, my mom lives basically on the same street as us. So we do, I am a little lucky. I do get to see her a little more than some other people do. Um, I think what's hard on me a little bit is my mother-in-law because we are super close and feeling for my husband a little bit because he does love to spoil his mom and he's yeah. such a mom's boy. And then also she just loves her children and loves me as her own child. And this was our first one to actually have me celebrate as like her daughter-in-law. And then also she's excited about the grandbaby. Like she's already like showering me with love and everything like that. So I think that's the hardest part because they live in New York and that's the worst part too. So I don't know when the next time we're going to be able to see them is. Yeah. So let's talk about this too. Let's get right into it. Um, what is it like being a mother in this COVID-19 stay-at-home order season that we're in? Um, so let's, let's hear from the moms who have kids running around the house, you know. What has it been like? My goodness. Tell us. Share the good, the bad, the ugly. It's all good. <laughs> um, well, I guess... At first, it was so hard. <laughs> it was so overwhelming. Um, I'm like, like when we first heard, I was like, okay, I'm gonna stay home. That's great. And then when I was like, okay, your kids have to do school at home. I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right, we could do this. No. And then it was like, what well, you have to also work at home. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so here I am, completely overwhelmed, and. I feel bad because the bo my, my boys, eight and six years old, are excited to do schoolwork on the computer and online. And I'm just like, who's excited to do school? But I'm um, just like, okay, well, let me, you know, let me do it for them because they're excited. So let me get the ball rolling on that. And it was just completely overwhelming at first. And then I realized, oh my goodness, I have all day long. Mm -hmm. So... When I figured that out, I was able to relax a little bit and like block out time in the morning for them and then block out time in the evening for me to do my work. And that was, took me two, three weeks to figure that out. But <laughs> it was good when I finally, you know, relaxed a little bit. Yeah. So now I'm enjoying it a little bit more. I'm, in, I'm liking it a little bit more. So like it took like a week or two to kind of transition and adapt to everything, would you say? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> So I'm a little bit upset with myself because as I was in the shower a couple of days ago, you, 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 you know, you do a lot of thinking in the shower as you wash your hair, but I, was, <laughs> but I was like, what week is this? And I start, can you guys hear me? Yeah. I don't know if you can. Okay. So I was, I was, I was really talking to myself. I was like, what week is this? And I was like, oh, it's the this, this sixth week. And I was like, why am I stressing now so much about at a certain time? You know, there's the kids are supposed to be doing this and I have this to do. 
And I'm like, I have the whole day, but it took six weeks to figure it out. <laughs> so I think maybe because my mind's always like so rigid at specific yeah. times. So I'm just like, why did it take this long? I'm like, this get it done in the morning, school work, work on the morning, work out for myself, Bible time for me. And then as, you know, as, as the days going by, I'm just like, just relax, just relax. Keep, you know, who cares about your hair? Just let them go play out once they're done. It may be 11 o'clock in the morning, but let them go out and play. But um, it is different. And I, honestly, I think it's a blessing for me to be at home, though my schedule is kind of different. I work still, I still, I work on Saturday, during Saturday and Sunday. So I take the girls with me to work and I sanitize the whole, the whole office because the, you know, the office is still pretty public. So. Wow. That's where we are. Um, I think for me, it's um, because of having my mom here and also my husband being essential worker, he's in IT for the hospital. Um, my journey was kind of started with a journey from anxiety and panic um, for like the first week and a half. Because um, all I could think of, it was all that news about the elderly and stuff. And so all I can think of is, are we bringing it in here to her? So that I really went through that period of anxiety and panic. Um, and then I stopped and took that pause and, and focused my eyes off of the chaos and back on the Lord um, and putting things back in control of his hands. And it was kind of like a wake up, Angela, what are you doing? You know, give it back to me here. I got it. Um, so for me, it, it, I went from, you know, okay, get out of that. Let's just focus here. Um, and at the time I still had my mother's aides coming in and caring for her. So that gave me a period of time to really kind of focus on what this meant for the kids and how our routine was gonna change and things like that. Um, and we kind of got in a good routine. And then by about that fourth week, it was like, yeah, too risky to have the aides coming in. So my life changed again, because now I couldn't just solely focus on caring for the kids. I also had to focus on caring for my mother completely. Um, and so that's been an adjustment and um, we're now just getting to that point where the kids are at a point where they've kind of got the routine with school and they know the days that they kind of have to be more helpful with me with my mom because i'm still working as well um, so it has definitely been a season filled of faith testing and strengthening and pruning and humbling because um, i'm seeing some things that i'm like who raised that child over there? Where did that come from? Because I know I didn't raise you that way. And Ryan, you know, I have fired myself as a mother about two or three times already. Um, I didn't quit. I just fired myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's been a place of um, surrender and thankfulness that I have a Heavenly Father I can trust with the situation. Yeah. And I think also a new and renewed appreciation for the blessings that perhaps me and my family have taken for granted um, because we've gotten so used to it. And now we see the chaos in the world. We see what everybody else is going through. I, I, I can't imagine being a single mom at home on my own with my kids or being a, a mom who's also, a, who's a single mom, a school teacher, and has kids that are learning. I just, I can't even imagine, I, as well as everybody else who's in all kinds of situations. Um, so it's really been that time of reflecting and really being thankful for what we have and then being that example to the kids. So, you know, you know, just taking it day by day, like Mo said, it took me some time too to realize, okay, you know, the pressure I'm facing is only the pressure I'm putting on myself to have things go a certain way. So stop doing that to yourself wow. um, and I think we're finally getting there yeah well so I'm, I'm let me just chime in here too as someone watching my my wife um, be a school teacher and have kids in the house learning at first it was an adjustment and the kids had their meltdowns but my wife is very structured and so she kept the structure and it really helped them get in the zone every day. Now Connor and Ava, or now Connor has been getting up, getting his schoolwork done right away without us even telling them. But I saw um, my wife first adjust and then she got in this groove and she's been like unstoppable. And I, I think she's really enjoying it. She's told me she's been enjoying the quality time with the kids, you know, during the day, once they're done with their schoolwork, once she's done with her schoolwork. But what I noticed is Rachel will do work at night. So she'll go back to schoolwork at night for her teaching. 
and so she can hang out with the kids during the day. And I thought that's, that's a cool adjustment, you know, come circle back. Let me work on my, my teaching later on. Let me hang out with the kids. And when they go to bed, I'll do stuff. And so that was a, that was a cool way of um, adjusting and adapting to the situation. So cool. Uh, let's talk about that pressures, pressure. You were bringing that up, Angela. Um, actually, no, wait, I had a question for you, Carolyn. Yes. <laughs> You're you're a pregnant pregnant mom, first child in the way. During this, the threats and the talks and the fears of of a real sickness, you know, mm -hmm. um, how have you handled that? Because that that to me sounds like it could be scary to think about, you know, trying to keep you safe and all that. Yeah, um, I think at first it was crazy because I actually felt like overwhelming peace, and I remember just telling my mom because I am an anxious person and anything can freak me out just like that um I just felt an overwhelming peace and then as it started getting more serious I noticed I let myself draw into the fear and draw into everything I saw on social media and um so I was trying to be extra cautious but at the same time still like know that God was in control and I think it wasn't until about um when my husband's uncle passed from it was when I was that hit me and it got me even more scared because <laughs> then I was just like this is real and everything and then you start thinking like can my husband be in the room with me when it comes can he he can't come to a lot of my doctor's appointments with me now and see the baby and all that stuff so I think it's more it's not even so much I'm scared about getting it or anything like that um it's more the memories that are kind of being taken away a little bit but I try to be thankful because I still am healthy and my baby's healthy and my family's healthy so I try to be thankful and just look at that and that this is just a new season and like it's going to be stories I get to tell my daughter type of thing um and then I just pray for the moms who are in worse situations than I am like pregnant moms whether it's they're a single pregnant mom or if they're like in a house that's not safe or if they are sick because I've seen a couple moms who are pregnant who are in the hospital with it while being very far along and so I'm just I try to be thankful and then I just try to pray out the fear and just trust God yeah well yeah that that's I was thinking about that too just and listening to you really kind of makes me think about wow how hard would it be to to go through a nine-month pregnancy and a couple months of that is this you know or um, man, like you, the memories, the thing, I mean, I even seen people can still getting some pictures if they have friends, you know, that can take pictures and stuff like that. But it's just like, yeah, you're not going through the same, like kind of traditional visits to the doctors together as spouses, you know? And so, yeah, that's a bummer, but thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was curious how, how are you handling that? The, the pressures, do you guys, was there, was there pressure? at home to be a certain way or did school just kind of add the extra pressure? What were you guys feeling, you know? Um, I think for me, the, the first pressure I felt was um, with me also working full time with the church was the need to still work. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I first went into it just like, okay, I've and I've experienced working from home before, um, but I went into it like, okay, I got to keep doing my work. I got to keep getting my, my eight hours in. They're paying me a paycheck. I got I to gotta get it done. And it's ministry. I definitely got to get it done. Um, <laughs> and then it was like, yeah, this isn't working. Um, and what, what hit me was, you know, when you start losing patience with your kids and when every time they come to you and they have a real legitimate need and you're like, go away, I'm busy, I'm trying to do work, and you're getting frustrated, you realize that you need to stop and get it, get it, get yourself together and put things in perspective, because they're going through it just like you are, um, and so it took, that was probably the most humbling thing for me, is to realize it's not the same as mommy just working from home, they are going through this trauma and this crisis too, and I need to remember that, and I got to step away and reprioritize, um, and know that they come first, and then whatever time I have left, well, God obviously comes first, but, you know, whatever time I have left goes to family next, and then whatever's left can go to work, um, and so it's having that perspective, but there are the pressures, you know. Um, I've tried not to watch too much news and be on social media too much, um, because you do. You see, I, I call them the highlight and blooper reels of people's lives um, and you got some in between but that's usually what it is so I think you can get caught in that comparison trap 
um, and, and it can be dangerous. And you start looking and going, well, why didn't I do that? Or why am I not handling in that way? And then you get, you know, you either react and you either receive and internalize it in a condemning way, or you receive and internalize it in a convicting way. Um, and I think that's the point. It's social media in itself isn't bad or, or listening to other people isn't bad. It's what you do with that that can cause the issue. So, you know, I like to say there's a difference between looking at something or talking to someone and responding by saying, oh, I didn't think of that, so I'm a terrible mother, and saying, oh, that was a really cool response. Maybe next time I'll try to respond that way. There's a big difference there. Yeah. So um, that's kind of, I felt the pressure, it's, but I think it's how you handle and what you do with that pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So pressure, I think I place a lot of pressure on myself, not, not even from work and not even from being a mom. Like I was trying to do the comparison pressure. If, can you combine those two together? <laughs> so the comparison part was like, the girls would say, but my teacher doesn't do it this way. And I started oh, laughing because when you go through this, when you go through the memes on social media, say, I'm the teacher now. And it really is the truth. I turned the phone over and I showed it to them. I was like, I'm the teacher now. <laughs> um, and so, and, um, but the te their teachers are awesome because I, I, you know, I gave them warning. I said, when the kids come back it's going to be a difference. <laughs> like, they'll, they'll just be like, my mommy said it this way. And then, um, but just like what Angela said, it was very humbling because I started realizing that who am I trying to compare myself to teachers and they themselves are mothers. So they have their own ways of doing it. And then I need to find my groove and how to do it. Um, and it was also a lot of short tempers, not, and it's not even from the kids. It was just really me. I was just really frustrated trying to figure out how I'm supposed to deliver a specific schoolwork and then take care of myself mentally. And I forget, I forgot several times how they're stressed out because they're stuck in the house. They can't go anywhere. Um, and, and so it really, it humbled. I, it was really humbling. I really, really humbled as far as like how I would also react to the kids and how direct um, my instructions were, <laughs> they're six and seven. And so I forget like, they're not like adults to where they can handle the directness and the six and seven year old is just about to water and tear up. And because I was just too forward, I'm like, Oh, let me go ahead and reel that back in. And so I, yeah. I'm learning to be a little bit more patient and a lot more gentle with my words. Cause oh, it's, it, it's difficult when you're transitioning from military mom then you can take your hat off and then go to military slash home mom and teacher and all those hats are being placed on your heads and you just have to figure out which hat you're putting on yeah so there was that pressure and so, comparison yeah and that can be overwhelming is what i'm hearing yeah. you say what about you chanel are you going to say something about that um i think uh pressure from social media i don't get it from social media as much uh, fortunately like the moms I guess that I follow are pretty like yep I don't know what I'm doing either so you know in that aspect it's it's not too bad on social media but I think like Maureen said the pressure you put on yourself more like you know like I was stated earlier you you have this thought in your mind that everything has to get done a certain way and then that's just totally flipped on you you know, so I think that pressure on yourself to continue that specific schedule or whatever that you have is like, you know, it's, it's hard to, to grasp sometimes and you feel bad because your kids are going through it. And um, I honestly, I, I honestly feel like they go through it better than I can. They're like happy and, um, you know, they're, they have their times where they're really bored, but for the most part, they're like, okay, we, I can do this, you know. So it's like, um, it's encouraging to see how happy they are about it, but it's more the pressure I'm putting on myself and I have to like refocus, re-look at it in a new way and just be like, no, you know, it doesn't have to be any type of way. So, yeah. yeah. That's good. Mom, um, you, you were a pastor's wife of a large church and you didn't necessarily go through a COVID-19 crisis as during that time, but you raised three kids the church was booming and exploding 
around the time I was, you know, a middle schooler, high schooler, college student, how did you handle the pressure of being a mom and being in such a big leadership role? You know, what did you do to handle that? <laughs> you just do the best you can. Um, when your kids were younger, um, and I was doing the comparison thing that the girls are talking about. And I feel like such an awful mom. I, yeah, you just, you just do. And I had high standards for myself and I can remember just crying and everything. And, and I was reading in Mark 14 and I will never, ever forget it. And it's this, the beginning of the chapter is about when uh, Jesus um, went, let me look at this here. Um, right before the Passover, and he went for um, in Bethany at the home of Simon. And a woman came there with an alabaster box of perfume and anointed his feet. And um, some of the people at the table were indignant. You know, they started criticizing this woman, and how could you allow her to do this, Jesus? But Jesus immediately defended her. I love that. He said, let her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You'll always have the poor among you and you can help them whenever you want to, but you'll not always have me. But she has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. The phrase, she has done what she could, stood out to me. And it was like, God was saying, did you do what you could? And I said, yes. And it was like, okay, give yourself a break. Just do what you can. And um, at that point, I was carrying internal baggage that weighed my spirit and soul down, that made anything you did seem bigger and harder to cope with. And then I was, uh, had a bad back. So it was difficult um, to clean the house on one day like I would like to do. I like to clean that house from top to bottom in one day. And it got yeah. to <laughs> yeah, where I couldn't, you know, I was like a drill sergeant, yeah? Yes. And uh, he remembers. But uh, it got to the point where I had to realize um, I can't use up all my time during the day cleaning and be exhausted by the time the kids come home. I have to save some energy for them. Hmm. They're important. And so I couldn't do that anymore. I had to learn to pace it out over a few days. So I had to adapt. And I've heard you ladies saying that. And one of the things that came out to me during this, as I have mentored some young women who have talked to me, is um, you need to have grace on yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay? Never gone this way before. You've never been here. And so it's like, okay, let's just stop and assess and adapt, adjust. And just like uh, when I started going to work, you know, I, I used to dust the house every day and vacuum and, you know, everything looked great. I went to work and it was like, I didn't have the energy to do that after being at work all day and, you know, coming home and, and cooking and helping the kids with everything and getting them to bed. And it's like, when do you vacuum it? You know, so we got to where it was done on Saturday when I wasn't working. So you, you adapt there are changes that happen in our lives and we have to adapt. But let me say this about pressure. Pressure is stress. And we put the pressure on ourselves, just like you said. Stress is what you say to yourself about the situation. So in this situation, we can say, oh, I'm such a terrible mom. I can't, I can't balance all this. But that's not true. You are a capable mom and you can do what you can do with who you are at the time. You're not the other person. You're not the super mom over there if she is such a thing, if there is such a thing. You are you. And see, I had my issues to deal with, physical issues and emotional issues to deal with in doing the normal activities of the day and doing the best that I could with who I was and, and what I was dealing with was all I could do. And that's all God required of me to do. And it gave me peace to know I've done what I could. And Jesus said, that's enough for that woman. That's enough for me. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause I, I'm, I'm a man and I see this pressure on TV or even in commercials or social media blogs that moms had to have, like it, they say you don't have to have everything together, but it looks like they have everything together. So you say one thing, but then you see their pictures and you see their kitchens look immaculate and perfect. You know, they, they're dressed perfectly, you know, 
their kids are all smiling in every picture and, and yada yada and you see that and what we kind of do is we mentally take this picture and go that's what it's supposed to be you know it's like taking a photo with your brain that that's the expectation for my life and that's just not what it is you know and i think we do that in a lot of areas of life marriage a lot of stuff products that you think are going to be perfect food you're going to buy but it's just not like that is it no it's not and rachel tootin's really good about putting some funny pictures <laughs> on there what life is really like in the tootin house i love her vulnerability and openness and and it just goes to show we all have messy houses at times things get out of order and life gets out into chaos but that's part of life that's life it's okay yep so this is good um what would you encourage moms let's let's talk about identity in this because i think i think identity from the world would say be like this as a mom but identity in god says what you know and i know that's a deep question but we should define here's what here's what i'll try to help explain to those watching your identity is defined by God, not by others. So what would you say? How would you encourage moms about their identity, um, putting their identity in God and letting God say who they should be as a mom and as a spouse, you know, and things like that. So. Well, it's interesting you bring it up because we had this um, exact conversation this past week in my small group. Um, and I had asked the ladies, um, based on your sermon, you know, what is the true identity that God is resurrecting in you? And I let them talk. And the common theme I heard from all of them was, I'm still trying to find my purpose. I'm, I'm, I'm praying and I'm searching for my purpose, 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 purpose. And so at the end, I said, you know, purpose, knowing your purpose is absolutely critical. But what I found is they were tying their purpose to their identity. And they were looking for purpose before they actually knew, who, before they actually know who they are. That's good. Um, and so I said, you know, you've got to know who you, what your true identity is before you even know your purpose. Because once you know who you are, then you can go and do what you've been called to do the way God wants you to do it. Um, so I think this was something that was really heavy on my heart this morning. Um, and so I think it's first, you have to know and believe whose you are to know who you are. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we know who, whose we are, but we don't believe it. Mm -hmm. So we'll say, I'm a child of God, but we really don't believe it. Our actions don't show we believe it. Our words don't show we believe it. Um, so we don't believe it. So we have to know and believe. And then once we know that, for me, I think um, there's a lot of things you need to do to learn more and more about that. But one key is you've got to study the Bible. You've got to be in the word. That is the foundation. That is where you will find exactly who God has created us to be. We we're created in his image. Um, and you don't know what that image is if you don't read the book that tells you exactly what the image is. Um, so you got to do there. And that's where you'll learn and understand that we were created in his image and that the sin of Adam and Eve and the fall in the garden disconnected us from God and it distorted our true identity. And I used to use this in a workshop. I would bring in, a, we talk about authenticity and I'd bring in a, a mirror that was perfectly fine. And I'd say, look in the mirror and what do you see? And you see your face and it's fine you know, as, unless you're one of those people who only thinks it's fine when you have makeup on, but your face is fine. <laughs> um, and then I took out a broken mirror and I said, now look in the broken mirror. And that same face was now distorted and dis disjointed and it wasn't the same. And I said, and that's what happened to our identity when the fall came. And so, but you'll learn that, but then as you continue to study, you'll learn that God sent his son. Jesus Christ to restore that relationship with him and to restore and resurrect our true identity. And then as you keep reading, you start to learn, you, you get to begin to make that choice because it is a choice. You get to make that choice to believe, embrace, and walk in the truth of who God says you are, that he's created us, that he's chosen us, that we are, he sees us as his masterpiece and that he loves us more than anyone else said does or more than we could ever imagine. Um, and then you'll be able to identify and stand against the lies of the enemy. So you're going to learn a lot about who God says you are, who he created you to be and his promises. And then when those ne negative self-talk comes in or, or the negativity for the world comes in or those sabotaging voices start, you'll be able to counteract them 
with the truth of his word and the promises of his word. Um, and so, you know, his purpose for your life and, and your walk, and, and I stress the you, because he has a different purpose and a different way for everybody to go about fulfilling that purpose. And yeah. so that's, you know, what it looks like for us will become clear as he resurrects and restores that true identity. That's good. And I did not pay her to do a recap of the series. Yeah. Put that out there, but you just <laughs> captured our series on the resurrection so well, because <laughs> I'm, I've also talked about purpose this past Sunday. So that just makes, uh, it's just really cool. So good well, can stuff. I say something about that? What's that? Can I say something about that? Yeah. Uh, she, she talked really well about the identity, but I think one of the things that uh, we as women and mothers do, we compare ourselves to other people and uh, we are each unique. We're one of a kind, which means we're irreplaceable and uh, incomparable. We can't, we, it's foolish to compare ourselves to other people. Mm -hmm. So when I think of Rachel, your wife, she is very organized, very structured. And some of us are not as organized and structured as her. So we would look at her and compare and think, I'm a mess. And that's what I used to say about myself, I'm a mess, until God showed me I'm a masterpiece. And I learned that my personality isn't as structured as Rachel, okay? I learned that years before I, I knew Rachel, but it's okay to be who I am. So some of you as mothers, you're much more sociable, you're more flexible, like my Renee. Oh my goodness, she's just laissez-faire. You know, the kids, it, it, she just lets them do what they want almost, and she's not upset or pressured about it, and they get it cleaned up as they can. You know, you get the toys out and more toys out, and you're home, as you get them out, you put that back, and, and everything stays clean. You can't compare yourself to Rachel because you're not Rachel. And it's okay to be you. And that's what you have to tell yourself. It's okay to be me. If God made me the way he made me, there's a reason for it. And your kids are enjoying all that laissez-faire. Okay? Yeah. 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 I think um, to encourage other moms out there, what sticks out to me a lot is in like a, a verse in Proverbs where it says, acknowledge God in all your ways and he will make your path straight. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know how to be a parent, a mom, whatever. I, I don't know, it's untreaded water. Like I just started my journey. Um, oldest is only eight years old. And, but there's that promise that like, if I acknowledge God first, all I have to do is love God. If I love him first, like, go to him, God, I don't know how to do this, or God, why am I feeling this weird way, or whatever. He literally guides you, because we have the Holy Spirit in us, mm -hmm. and it's like, I don't have to know what I'm doing all the time. Like, God, all I have to do is acknowledge you, and you'll make my path straight. What's my path? My kids are part of my path. My spouse, if I have a spouse, is part of my path. You know, my other, my extended family, my other relationships, my other friendships, they're all part of my path. And as long as he promises that as long as I acknowledge him, he's going to make it straight. So it's like when I'm caught up in my stresses and anxieties, if I just go back to his word and remind myself, okay, all I have to do is acknowledge him in this moment, love him. And I can trust him with my kids. Like yeah. I don't have enough eyes to watch my kids. God does. I don't have the wisdom yeah. For everything God does but so I can just trust him you know with my family with myself and that's good. I think that's that's encouraging so I want to encourage all the moms out there you got this because you have God on your side all right. All right. Yeah, that's good. awesome any other thoughts on that that was good stuff that was awesome all right great um how how are you talking about God and, and keeping your identity in God versus your identity in, you know, others. How are you guys staying connected to God during this time, being busy with the kids all around? Like, how do you do it? You just, like, do you sneak away in the closet, you know, <laughs> with a, a snack and water and a Bible or, or, or music, you know, what do you guys do? Um, I, I'll jump in, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't, to be honest, like quiet alone time 
isn't always there. But yeah. what I have been able to enjoy is talking to God in my day-to-day stuff, like as, as I am doing the dishes or as I am cooking or as I am helping the kids with their work or as I'm trying to sit down and do my own, I'm like, God, you know, just having those conversations throughout the day. Like it does, it's not like a, for me at least, it's not like a sit down time where I'm yeah. like, you know, unless somehow God wakes me up early, like the other day, the dog made a mess in the house. So I woke up early to clean that up. And then I was like, oh, nobody's out yet. I had that, that quiet time to be able to read a little bit. But usually it's just while I'm doing everything that I'm always doing. So, and that's, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to be able to do that at the same time. It's kind of cool because like God's not in a box and right. we can kind of put God in a box because we go, okay, I'm going to meet him at this scheduled time. And if I don't get it, you know, oh man, I haven't hung out with God. But the reality is, is God is with you all day. That's, right. what, that's what I'm hearing you say. So that, that's cool. How, how have you guys been connecting with God then during the day uh, through this whole thing? So for me, it's just exactly what Chanel says too. It's like throughout the day, like my kitchen counter is, is our um, school, de- is our desk, is, our, is where we eat, is our breakfast, is our lunch, it's everything, right? So even as the girls are doing their schoolwork and I'm here de- conducting my own duties, I'm, you know, we're speaking, like, I know he's pouring something into me. I just maybe can't hear it at that moment. Maybe I'm not as sensitive to to hearing it, but I know he's always there. It's always there guiding me. Um, And um, at night when, when everything's done, when the schoolwork's done and the dishes are clean and everything, and I can actually get to bed, this is where I, I, um, I primarily put all my attention on him and, uh, but that's not necessarily saying that I have to put him at a specific time. It's just where I feel that everything, I, I can keep my focus on him now, but that's more flexibility comes into play. It's I'm able to speak with him anytime during the day. And I just have more time, right? Time for him at yeah. night because everything's quiet. And that, that's where my, more my attention is. Um, that's where a lot of my growth is coming into play as well, where I'm actually spe- uh, spending a lot more time with him and going through all the Zoom and ladies classes. But that's yeah. where every day, all day is now, now I'm actually hearing him more because I have more time in the house to hear him more opposed to when everything was normal, where all these pressures and all this ca- the chaoticness is coming in, yeah. was filling us up. That's good. Cool. I, I think for me, it's um, been, you know, adapting and being flexible and willing to give grace throughout. So it changes daily or a weekly basis. Um, doing, you know, fighting for that alone time with him, as well as keeping myself surrounded by ladies and other believers who are going through the same thing and um, us sharing our faith, sharing our testimonies, sharing our trials. Um, doing devotions. It must have been God. I found a devotion called Overwhelmed by My Blessings, Encouragement for Mothers. And it actually happens to be a 12-week devotion. So I was like, that works. I get it. You know, I can just keep doing it for however long this happens. And it's been really encouraging um, for me. Um, But also remembering it's just not at the center for me, but I also have to make sure it's at the center for my family and my kids, that they're keeping him at the center too. So reminding them, you know, hey, do your devotion, having family conversations around scripture, um, using right now media um, Mm -hmm. as a tool. And actually um, one way we, you know, we faced, not that the kids were rebellious. It was, they went through this phase of where they wanted, there wasn't structure. So it was like kind of vacation because school wasn't in play yet. And so they didn't like when structure had to come back. And so they were kind of rebelling against anything that was structure. Um, And so, you know, we kind of let them pick, hey, Christian, you pick this week what you want to do on Right Now Media and and engaging them and involving them and having conversations. Um, But also for me, um, the spirit speaks to me really through worship. And so when it's one of those rough days and everybody seems to be out of control or what have you, 
I put the headphones on with Bluetooth to worship music and I block all the noise out. And that's just my time. And the kids have learned that when mom's got the headphones on and it's clear she's worshiping her. <laughs> um, and that gives me my time to just kind of refocus, take a breath and pause. And so much like, you know, Chanel and, Ma and Maureen said, it's remembering to just stay connected to him all day long and not just plugging in when you feel like you're empty or you're in need of something. It's staying plugged in all day through prayer, worship, reading, whatever it might be. Yeah, that's good. Now, I don't know if, if fathers or kids are going to watch this, but maybe this is just more for solidarity for moms. But what do, what do moms need from their spouses, their family members, their kids during uh, just this period, not just during this time, but what, what could you recommend? Or maybe you could all just kind of like unite together and go, this is what we need. Ah, you know, but what would be a good way to, to serve moms during this time um, and just serve moms, period, you know, after this whole COVID-19 crisis? I'll go. Um, yeah. I think, and I know it's particular to moms, but I also think it can be kind of the same thing that many people need, but especially moms. Um, and that's, I think there needs to be understanding of each person's perspective. So not being so quick to, to either, because you don't understand why someone's freaked out about something or why someone needs to do it this way, just understanding each other and where each person's coming from and how they're dealing with the situation. Um, so having that understanding, patience, compassion, flexibility, cohesiveness, yeah. um, and along with that cohesiveness, collaboration and cooperation are, I think, critical. Um, let's not make it worse for each other. And hopefully as mothers, we're trying to, we're trying to do the best that we know how to do. And we're really not trying to make life miserable for everybody else. <laughs> we really aren't. We have everyone's best interest in mind, I would hope. Um, so, you know, work with us, not against us, um, yeah. is what I would say. That's good. Any, any encouragement when it comes to this, you know, what, what do moms need? And, and I mean, it could be just that you encourage moms period right now, because this is our last question, but something that we, that we need to think about for moms, uh, whether it's spouses, kids, or, or just for each other, you know, what, what do we, what do we need to do to serve moms? I think uh, what came up in our group um, last night was um, to be seen, to be heard, and understood, and that goes along with what she said, but to be validated is the word that I was hearing her say, and um, you might not totally understand, but at least to not invalidate. Well, you don't have to feel like that. That's an invalidation. Well, that sounds crazy. That's an invalidation. A woman really needs to be validated. We all need to be validated. But, you know, I can really tell, honey, this has been hard on you. That's a validation. I can see you need some alone time. I'll take the kids. That's a validation. Not just the words, it's the doing. And, um, and, and maybe your mother needs something different than a long time. She might be able, she might need something different. She might need to just hold me, hug me, you know, touch me, because I'm not getting it from anyone else. So they're going to need extra hugs and love and affection. Um, so give it, you know, just be sensitive, pick up, observe, don't let it be all about you, okay? Good. Yeah, I think as, as moms, we're like the go-to person when you're hungry, when you're bored, when you, whatever, you know, like we're that go-to person all the time. So I think teamwork comes to mind. Like uh, if, I, if my kid can be independent enough to get their own snack, maybe, <laughs> you know, or like, or if I don't have to think about dinner for a day or a moment, you know, that would be nice. Um, it seems like when you're at home, you're like constantly making something or getting a snack for somebody or like whatever. So I think that 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 like teamwork from everybody in the house, it would be like, you know, would be something that I would like. And 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 like the kids are pretty, um, they're pretty gracious towards me, you know, when I get irritable and cranky or whatever, they're, they're pretty forgiving 
Um, but I think just having that grace and mercy back to them and um, to each other, if you have like a spouse in the house or whatever. Um, yeah, that's what comes to my mind. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Cool. Well, um, I, I want us to share something just from everything I've heard and everything going on. There's no doubt, I think, grace and patience for one another, for yourself, is is definitely um, permitted. You know, uh, we, we need to give ourselves permission to um, have made mistakes during this and adjusting and getting frustrated and stressed out or mad. You know, um, I see that really even in our government and our leaders and our parents, moms, everyone just needs to give each other grace because we've never been through this, you know, before. And handling this was a test of a lot of that. Handling this was a test of our patience and everything. Um, and so, you know, we had our meltdowns, you know, and we had breakdowns in our house and stuff. And um, but I think just showing grace to each other. And I, I would love uh, to just, you know, encourage moms, you know, to give yourself some grace, you know, and um, I, I, I loved hearing what you guys said today about pressure. That really gave me some insight, you know, and trying to understand you and, knowing when I need to validate my wife in more as a mom and as a wife, you know, so, and a teacher at the same time, she's, she's double teacher now. So this was really cool and really enjoyed hearing your hearts. One last moment here, if you want, just to share anything that's on your heart for moms before we close. It's up to you. For me, it's just remembering you're not alone. God is always with you and you have, there's a lot of us going through, same and similar things and we're all in this together so you know reach out to others as well um and, good. and don't isolate yourself okay. yeah don't isolate i agree um and just just a constant remember remembering that the holy spirit is with you he's the chain breaker he's the one that can lift up anxiety he's the one that can change the atmosphere in your home when everybody's a little cranky or whatever he's the one who can a simple a simple uh prayer can just change mm -hmm. you know all that so remembering that holy spirit power that you have as a mom can can do some damage to your house to the enemy so yeah that's right all right very good um thank you so much for sitting down with me and uh, do, going through these questions and just hearing your heart as moms. Um, happy Mother's Day again, too. So I pray that you guys can make the most of this day and um, in the situation that we're in. And I pray that you feel cherished and loved and lavished on. And uh, I pray that it's also not just um, today, you know, or not just Mother's Day, but it would be like every day that we would learn to grow, to love love our moms and, and appreciate them. And mom, I, I appreciate you and I love you. And you've been so good and so faithful and uh, just incredible to watch you as a woman of God, but also behind the scenes, love us like Jesus loves us, you know? So that was so cool. And this is part of my, my mother's day gift. No. <laughs> so, but but God, God bless you all very much. Let me just say a prayer. Actually, you know what? Uh, Mom, why don't you pray for all moms real quick around the world uh, during this time, all right? Yes. Okay. Father, we just praise and thank you that you're our Abba Father. And what you've called us to do as mothers, you enable us to do. You make us competent. As we plug into you and spend time with you, you just pour it right in. So, Father, I pray that today you will bless all the women, Father, who are our mothers. Bless them with your presence and a holy confidence that you've got this for them, that they are equal to anything and ready for anything. Through Christ's sufficiency, they can do anything. And whatever they have to face today, tomorrow, in the weeks and months ahead, you are with them, you are in them, and you are for them. So God, just hold them. Draw them close to you. Minister to their deepest needs. 
validate them through your Holy Spirit that they are your precious child. You have not forgotten them. You love them just the way they are and that you accept them and you are championing them because you have called them to be a mother and they are your emissaries to their family and they are important. So Father, just empower them today. Help us not to think of what we're not getting this year, but help us to appreciate technology so we can see one another. Help us to appreciate the positives that we get to talk to one another. And Lord, I pray that you will just bind hearts and minds together and families together on this Mother's Day as they reach out and appreciate one another. In Jesus' name, amen.